Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to diagnose and fix P0016 engine timing fault code. Uh, very quickly on this engine, I'm gonna explain what this code is about. Then we start testing every component one by one. So basically when you install the timing chain after removing the camshaft, crankshaft, or even after replacing the timing chain itself, you have to adjust the timing properly between the camshafts and crankshaft. That adjustment is something mechanical between the crankshaft and camshaft that you need to do every time that you want to install the chain back on. But what happens on some engines like this one, in addition to the mechanical timing adjustment that you do at the very beginning, we have another mechanism that we call it variable valve timing. So when we have this mechanism, when engine is running, in addition to what you adjusted on the timing system at the very beginning, ECM can change the valve timings accordingly to increase the engine output torque based on different engine driving condition. So on some early models, we used to have only one variable valve timing uh, or what many companies call it VVT. Basically, if we have one VVT mechanism, it's going to be on the intake valve. But some engines like this one, this engine is a dual VVT engine. So it does have one VVT for intake and one VVT for exhaust uh, camshaft. But how this system works? This system works basically by engine oil. For each VVT, there is a VVT solenoid valve, which is this one. VVT solenoid valve provides the engine oil for VVT mechanism itself. So anytime that ECM wants to activate or change the valve timing, it's going to activate this solenoid valve. And right here we have some oil passages. Uh, by activating this one, engine oil can get into the VVT mechanism and inside the VVT mechanism we have two chambers. One chamber for advance, the other chamber for retard. So basically when ECM wants to advance the valve timing, it's going to adjust the VVT solenoid to provide the oil uh, on advanced chambers. So the camshaft is going to rotate uh, in direction of engine rotation to advance the valves. And when ECM wants to retard the valve timing, it's going to adjust the VVT solenoid to provide the oil to the retard chambers. So it means the uh, camshaft is going to rotate in the opposite direction. On this VVT, we have the exterior housing, which is connected to the timing chain. But camshaft itself is connected internally to the VVT. As a result, if we have two VVTs, we should have two VVT solenoid valve as well. One VVT solenoid valve for uh, each VVT mechanism. And ECM keeps monitoring the VVT operation by monitoring the camshaft position. As you see, this is the intake camshaft, exhaust camshaft for each one. I do have one cam sensor. So this is the tone wheel and this is the camshaft sensor and the other one for the exhaust camshaft. So generally, if you have two VVTs, you should have uh, two camshaft sensor as well one for the intake and the other one for the exhaust so basically when this fault happens it could be anything affecting the timing system okay so first of all as you know the vvt and vvt solenoid valve they work with engine oil so if you haven't replaced the engine oil for the long time you have to replace the engine oil because over the time oil sludge is going to get around the vvt solenoid and it's going to get into the VVT mechanism itself and it's going to make some problem for their operation. If you have this code, as soon as you see the code, just check the engine oil. If engine oil hasn't been replaced for a long time. You need to replace the engine oil. That's, that's very important. But if there is nothing wrong with the engine oil or if you have replaced the engine oil and you still have the problem, you may need to start diagnosing on uh, VVT solenoid and step by step you're going to go for the VVT and timing chain so we're not going to go for the timing chain at the very first place because the problem is mostly common on on the VVT solenoid of course if you have recently replaced the timing chain and right after replacing the timing chain you have this code on your scan tool uh, it could be from the timing chain adjustment but if you haven't touched the timing chain recently uh, you might need to start from the easiest ones. So in this video, I'm going to explain completely how to diagnose the uh, VVT solenoid valve. We have a couple of different steps for inspecting and diagnosing the VVT solenoid valve. And for the VVT itself, 
uh, let's see how we can diagnose and fix the car. Because this fault code is referring to the intake side, we need to focus on the intake VVT solenoid and intake VVT itself. Here is my intake VVT solenoid. You can test the VVT solenoid before removing the solenoid itself. For some engines, it's really easy to remove the solenoid. If there's just one bolt, you can remove the bolt and take the VVT solenoid out. But for this one, you have to remove the whole uh, valve cover out. So what we can do, basically, if you take the VVT solenoid valve connector out, you will see two pins right here. So out of these two pins, one pin is the power supply coming from the fuse box, which provides the battery voltage. And the other one is the control line, which is connected between the VVT solenoid valve and engine control module. So when engine is running, anytime that ECM wants to control the solenoid valve, it provides the ground from the other wire. The, so the first thing that you need to do is to check the power supply on the VVT solenoid valve to make sure battery voltage is provided for this actuator. Use the multimeter, set it on the voltage, red prop on the positive pin, and black one on the body ground. As you see, I'm getting battery voltage. So in this case, if you are not getting anything, it means the uh, power supply line is already shorted to ground or it's already open. So you need to chase the wiring back, find the open circuit or short circuit on the power supply. Uh, the other wire on VVT solenoid valve is the control line, which goes all the way from here uh, to engine control module. So basically you can test that one as well by checking the continuity or resistance between the control line on VVT solenoid valve side and ECM side to make sure this wire is okay. Right after that, you can test the internal resistance of VVT solenoid valve. Of course, you can remove the uh, solenoid valve to check the internal resistance as well, but this is what you can do it on the engine too. Set the multimeter on resistance. You have two props measure the resistance across two pins on VVT solenoid valve. So as you see, for this engine, I'm getting 7.8 ohm, which is okay. Gen generally for many engines, I've seen between seven to 14 ohms, which is okay. But generally, if a solenoid valve is shorted internally, you will get something really low, or if it is open, you will get no reading or something really high. So this value was okay. If I'm getting something like this, it, it means the winding inside the solenoid valve is okay. But it doesn't confirm the solenoid operation because sometimes it may have mechanical problems or the oil sludge around the valve is gonna make problem. To confirm the VVT solenoid mechanical operation, disconnect the connector and apply battery positive and negative on the valve. This will force the VVT to maximum advance, which is going to cause engine hesitation. So after applying the battery positive and negative, engine must hesitate or stop. This confirmed that VVT solenoid valve is operating properly. Let's go for the next step to remove the valve and see how we can test it. So let's try removing the VVT solenoid valve to see how we can inspect it and what we will see around the valve itself. I'm trying to do it on this engine so you will have a really good view how it works. So this is the intake VVT solenoid valve. As you see this one is nice and clean uh, but sometimes when you haven't replaced the engine oil for the long time, when you remove this one, you see oil sludge all around here that you need to clean it properly. So if, if oil sludge is around the VVT, it's not gonna let the engine oil to get into the VVT mechanism itself. As I said earlier, you can test the internal resistance on the engine, uh, but I have removed it already. I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. So using the multimeter, select the resistance and you're gonna need to measure the resistance across these two pins so as you see the value is more than seven as i told you this value is normally on many engines i've tested uh, 
it's been normally between 7 to 14 ohms. You're going to need to check the workshop manual if the value is something different just to make sure if it is within the spec or not. If you have tested the internal resistance, you're going to need to make sure if the VVT solenoid mechanical part works properly as well or not because the resistance inspection is actually for the electronic part you're going to need to check the spool valve inside the vvt solenoid as well you can provide battery positive and negative right here but just to do it safer i'm using this one nine volt battery so these two clamps will be provided just right here and you're gonna need to just turn this one on. When you keep turning on and off, on and off, you need to make sure that you hear clicking sound uh, from the VVT solenoid. So basically using this one, you can test the VVT solenoid operation, the mechanical part as well. If you see it's not clicking, it's not working, it means the spool valve inside is already stuck, it doesn't move at all. So uh, that's why you have this fault code because it's not uh, moving anyway and it doesn't let the oil to go through the uh, VVT itself. So if you have the scan tool, I'm gonna show you how to test the VBT solenoid operation by the scan tool. So I have already connected my scan tool to OBD2 connector. As you see, I'm using launch scan tool today. Let's turn on the scan tool and see what we can do. My ignition switch is on. So I need to select the car first. As you see, it's a Toyota. All right, on the system list for this one, I'm just going to select engine. Uh, you have a couple of options here for reading the code, erasing the code, read freeze frame. Uh, reading the live data, actuation test, and a special function. So I'm going to need the actuation test. So go for the actuation test. So on actuation test, if I scroll down, I have control the VVT system right here. I have some description. So this system is going to force the VVT to operate uh, by actuating the VVT solenoid valve. So if that happens, I will have the rough idle or engine may stall. If you have the rough idle or engine stops, it means the VVT is functioning properly. But if you perform the test and nothing happens, it means there is something wrong on, on that VVT. Ignition must be on, engine must be running, and uh, shift lever must be on power position. Monitoring data, yes. So for monitoring data, I can select engine speed. And if you go all the way down, you can select the duty on VVT exhaust and intake. And right here, you see the engine RPM, control of the VVT is off, we are trying to make it on. So as, as soon as you press the on button, you, you will feel the engine goes rough or engine will stall, okay? If any of these two happens, it means the VVT is functioning properly. If it doesn't happen, it means the VVT is not functioning. That could be from the VVT solenoid or VVT itself that I explained uh, in the video how to test them. Let's try it. Let's press on and see what's going to happen. So as you see, engine is running very rough. If I turn it off, engine goes back to normal. So this means that VVT is functioning uh, just fine and there is nothing wrong with that. For this fault code, you might need to check the crankshaft position sensor as well, because basically this code is for uh, crankshaft and camshaft correlation. But basically, if the crankshaft sensor is faulty, you may have some other problems like too long cranking before starting or sometimes no starting at all. But if you have checked the timing system, you still have the problem. You might need to check the uh, crankshaft sensor as well. 
in this engine crankshaft position sensor is just located here right here at the front side of the engine some engines they have this, this sensor on the rear side so check the connector properly make sure wires behind the connector are okay the connector itself is not loose is not broken and for the sensor itself we're gonna need to measure the resistance of the sensor to make sure it's okay and i'm gonna show you how to do it all right this is my crankshaft position sensor let's see how we can test it for testing the crankshaft sensor you can use the multimeter adjust it on resistance and you can measure the resistance across these two pins so as you see on this sensor i'm getting 0 0.29 kilo ohms which is okay for on this sensor You might need to inspect the camshaft position sensor as well. Same story, you're gonna need to check the connector. If you have the fault code for, for the intake camshaft, you're gonna need to check the camshaft sensor only on the intake side. If you have the fault code for exhaust camshaft, you're gonna need to check the fault code only for the exhaust side, okay? You don't, you don't need to replace both camshaft sensors or inspect both camshaft sensors. So you need to check the connector, make sure the connector is seated properly. There is no dirt, no contamination. This gap between the sensor and the tone wheel is really important. If it is too close or too away from the tone wheel, sensor is not going to pick up the reading. Depends on the type of camshaft sensor, you might be able to inspect the internal resistance as well. So for that, you need to check the workshop manual, see what is the value for internal resistance of the sensor, just like what I did on crankshaft sensor. If you have the value from the workshop manual for inspecting the internal resistance of the camshaft sensor, you can do the same thing. If the, if the value is not correct, you're going to need to replace the cam sensor accordingly. If you have already checked the VVT solenoid valve and there was no problem on it, you might need to remove the camshaft itself and test the VVT. So basically you can remove the camshaft and use the compressed air on the proper side of the camshaft and see if VVT rotates. If inside the VVT itself, there is a locking pin. If that locking pin is not getting released, obviously VVT is not gonna work as well. If you apply the compressed air and it still VVT doesn't rotate, you have to replace the VVT mechanism itself. If you have checked the solenoid, it was okay and the VVT was okay, you might need to redo the timing adjustment because the problem could be from your timing adjustment initially or you might need to change the timing chain or timing belt.